You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. For the community. For the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Welcome, I'm Pat Kazakoff, and today I'm speaking to Sarah Gancher, playwright. The world premiere of her play, Seder, is taking place at the Hartford stage. It's a story set in Budapest after the Second World War, and it's about a family. And it's probably a little bit more than just about a family. That's true, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what is Seder about? Seder is very much, it's part of a series of plays that I've written about this one particular neighborhood in Budapest, which is the seventh district. It used to be the uh, old Nazi controlled ghetto. Um, and before that was the Jewish neighborhood of Budapest for many, many years. I noticed you pronounced not Budapest, yeah. but Budapest. I know, my American best friend is always giving me. Well, uh, Budapest give... is divided into two. That's wasn't right. it Buda and wasn't and it Pesh? Pesh? Yeah, that, that's, that's right. right. I mean, probably I should say Budapest because I'm not in Hungary and I don't want to sound pretentious, but <laughs> this neighborhood is definitely in Pest. is a little bit like the Lower East Side of, of the city. It's a Jewish neighborhood that we think of as a Jewish neighborhood that is actually, has always been very, very diverse, always been an immigrant neighborhood there. It's a quote unquote Jewish neighborhood where there aren't really any Jews anymore, although for very different reasons than the Lower East Side. And it is a place that's being heavily gentrified now that uh, where sort of the commodification of Jewish identity in some way is a part of that transformation of the city. You wrote the play about a play in Budapest. Are you Hungarian? I'm not, but I did live in Budapest for a couple of years. And why? Why are um, you living in Budapest? I just moved there sort of, um, I was, uh, I had a theater company in New York. I was working a very, very intense full-time job at the Metropolitan Opera. My, um, my husband and I are both writers and we both were feeling a little bit burned out and we sort of made this decision to just quit our jobs and move and just try to focus on writing for a little while. And, and you could write in English in Budapest? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was freelance writing for a couple different American companies. That's how I made my money while I was there. And then I also eventually took on a couple English students and so forth. And while I was there, I really fell in love with this neighborhood and with a group of young people that I uh, knew who were um, Jewish Hungarians who were uh, sort of of my generation that were came of age, were, were coming of age just as the Berlin Wall was falling and sort of rediscovering their Jewish identity in this really interesting, really complicated way where they sort of were like, had not been raised with it at all. But Which sort is of typical of Hungarians. Very, very, very typical. Very, very typical of Because they're the people who stayed. They're the people who stayed after the Second World War. They didn't go to Israel. They didn't go to the US. So the people who stayed, by and large, made the decision, we're staying, and it means we're not Jewish anymore. And so many of my friends really didn't find out that they were Jewish until they were sort of in their teens or even adults. Well, the big joke about Hungarian is that Hungarian Jews have two passports. Uh, in their right pocket, they have their Jewish passport. And in their left pocket, they have their Catholic passport. And yeah, that's interesting. I've never heard that before, but it makes sense. Yeah. So, so what is the play about? So the play is uh, actually set in 2003, so quite some time after World War II. <laughs> and also after, after 1956, after the Hungarian that's Revolution. That's right, that's right, which plays a big role in this, in this play. It actually is set throughout the 20th century. It's, it's rooted in 2003 at the first um, Passover Seder of an otherwise secular family that's being led by their very well-meaning but uh, somewhat bumbling American neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, Was that you? Uh, sort of. I mean, <laughs> it's it's obviously not me. It's a man also mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in the play, but sure. I mean, a lot of my feelings about being this like very uh, well-meaning, sort of like Pollyanna-ish, you know, super positive American. I mean, here I always feel quite cynical and. Uh, but, but when there, you're there, any, any American there is just seems like we can do it, we can fix it, it can right. all change, right. you know. Right. Uh, so that was that was definitely uh, that something was that I drew on for for that for that role. 
it really centers on this true experience that a neighbor of mine had. She had worked at this one particular building in Budapest. During the Second World War, had been the headquarters for the Arrow Cross Party, which is the Hungarian Nazi Party. After that, it became the headquarters for the AVO, which is the Hungarian equivalent of the KGB. And today, it is a museum called the House of Terror Museum that is, uh, looks at the Nazi regime and the communist regime as sort of like twin terrors. It sounds very intellectual, the way you're talking about it. It sounds like a, a big moralistic play, but it's centered on this family. It is. So here's, here's the thing. Here's, here, here's sort of the, the image that's uh, at the root of the play. My neighbor had worked in this building. So it was her office building. You know, she was a secretary. She took shorthand. She ordered envelopes, right? That was her job. Imagine that your office building, like, like the building that we're in right now, one day gets turned into a museum called the House of Terror, right? Mm -hmm. She had this experience when the museum opened of going to, this, uh, going to the House of Terror Museum. And uh, they have this wall in the basement called the Wall of Perpetrators or the Wall of Murderers. And she saw her own face at 18 on this wall and was sort of struck with this question, am I yeah. responsible for the things that happened in this building? that I didn't know about, you know? What are the things that I'm responsible for that my system did that I, you know, may not have been directly involved in, but was complicit in some way because I, I lived here and I well, was a part of it. That question of not knowing about yeah. it, that, I mean, there's something around that. I mean, yeah. uh, we've heard all the stories of Nazism. Yeah. And there's a, we've heard about Holocaust deniers, yeah. we've heard about all that. Yeah. So the question is, did she really know about it? Right, or could you have, if you didn't know about it, could you have, right? Uh, to what extent do we not allow ourselves to see the things that, um, that we uh, may or may not be responsible for in our world? It's a big question that I have about our world now too, you know, our clothes, our food, the, you know, the things that make our lives possible. The backstory of those things sometimes isn't so pretty, one suspects, but we, we definitely are not in the practice of looking at them on so, a daily basis. So that's the, that's the moralistic, that's, that's the, moralistic the big picture. Course. So it what imagines about that she comes home from that experience of seeing her face on the wall to her family's uh, first Passover Seder, which is being led by, you know, uh, by her daughter who's got a crush on this American neighbor. And uh, an estranged daughter shows up. I don't want to do too many spoilers, so I'll just sort mm -hmm. of le leave it there. Um, but it's definitely about um, this family, whether this sort of shattered family can find their way back to each other to some sort of forgiveness, and also, um, as also about these characters grappling in a really, real, extremely concrete way with these questions, but that not as abstract questions, but as, can I get my face off that wall? Well, Should I'm, I? I'm very, very interested in this estranged daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, just because that's a common story. Yeah, sure. You know, the, the older mother who has gone through, uh, the, who's gone through terrible, terrible experiences and the, and the daughter who doesn't understand this and now blames her mother for we don't know what. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not exactly stated, but there's a lot of blame. Is that a big part of the story too? It is, it is a big part of the story, and again, I don't know how much I can get into without like doing spoilers, which we maybe don't care about right now, I don't know, but um, the... Uh, I'm just interested. Yeah, sure. I'm just I, interested. So the daughter is definitely, um, Does the was daughter like 18, 19 at the time that the Berlin Wall was coming down and sort of definitely did not approve of her parents working in this building and sort of was really out on the streets fighting and demonstrating for democracy and really... Um, it really uh, having a difficult relationship with her mother who wanted to keep her safe, who had lost her family in World War II and was not willing to lose a child to any more kind of political repression um, and really didn't trust the idea that, um, that uh, the Soviet system would actually fall. So I'm listening to you talking and I'm hearing a lot of moralistic, I'm hearing a lot of intellectual, I'm hearing a lot of political. So when you were writing this, what was guiding you more? The political, the moralistic, or the story about the mother and the daughter? It's so not separate. It's not possible to separate for this play. So everything. I mean, that, you know, people say the personal is political and it, that might sound like a big idea, but I also consider it to actually just be true. Anybody that has ever had a Thanksgiving dinner with uh, relatives with whom you do not agree politically will know exactly what I'm talking about, right? That there's some way in which uh, the way, uh, you know, that 
our interpersonal conflicts with each other and our political conflicts with each other are bound up together, right? And we might not be able to fully love or fully embrace somebody whose um, vision of the way that the world ought to be is totally different, right? Uh, we might be able to come to that if we put those things out of our mind, or it might actually sometimes totally wreck the relationship. So, um, so that's very much uh, that's very much a part of this play. So, um, and the daughter definitely bears a very, very direct responsibility for her mother appearing on that wall. Daughter and the mother, they don't have a good relationship. Right. But, but is it because of this political uh, issue, or is it because of the mother and the daughter? Again, I don't think it's, uh, it's in a way not separate. There's, uh, as often happens in these plays where there's like an estranged family member that comes back in, there's a, there's a big secret, right? There's a, a playwriting teacher of mine, um, Marcia Norman, a really beautiful playwright, uh, calls this type of story, which is you know really one of the great mm -hmm. classic templates of American theater, the truth comes out. So there's, um, Every aspect of this play really is political and personal folded together, right? It's the way in which politics and the power structures of our world manifest in our lives in a way that is really impactful emotionally and, uh, and on a day-to-day, -day, moment by moment level, right? We're not separate from the world in which we live. That's, the, that's one of the theses of this play, you know? We don't have a separate emotional life or, or a separate um, relationships that are outside of the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. And we're all connected. We're all connected, yeah. And I notice you know, this this Hungarian theme, you're carrying it on because you're doing another play, uh, Clausel. Clausel Square, yeah. I, like I said, it's part of a seven play cycle. So Seder is one. There's uh, four full length plays um, in this cycle, uh, two one acts and an installation, a, a work of installation. So um, there, it's actually complete now. If I had known when I started writing it that uh, <laughs> that it was actually going to eat up so much of my life, I don't know if it really would have carried forward. But I really deeply love all of these plays quite a bit, and um, I can feel that. Yeah, and I can feel that you love the Hungarian business, that you loved part being in Hungary. I, I'm uh, the community of people that I work with and have learned from and continue to learn from there. I'm just very deeply in love with. And so why did you come back to America? I got into graduate school. <laughs> uh -huh. I, uh, I really, I think in a way it's through working on this cycle of plays that I really sort of discovered, wow, the things that I'm writing are so big and so epic. Seder takes place really all in one apartment, but it also travels all throughout the 20th century. There's uh, parts in the 50s, the 70s, the 80s. It really is looking at this entire sort of sweep of Soviet and post-Soviet history in, in Hungary. And I was just like, I'm just not good enough to do this yet. So I applied to grad schools in the US. Everybody told me it would take a couple years to do it. And then I got in on the first shot. And I said, oh, no, now I have to go back. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? Uh, NYU, Tisch, for, for dramatic writing. Um, and your husband, who you you said went yeah. to uh, Budapest with you, yeah. he's also in America? He is, he is, yeah. And we came back together, and you know we're still very happily together. We have a little four-year-old boy. Oh, you know. that I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't read I didn't read anything about that in any of your uh, public oh, I mean, it's not, not usually in a playwright's bio, so how many children you have. <laughs> no, they don't seem to mention that. It's not part of the practice. Maybe it should be, though. No, it's I a good time. I, I enjoy yeah. hearing about it. Yeah. So I've been talking to Sarah Gann and uh, you've been listening. The play is an epic play. It's part of a seven-part series. It doesn't just talk about uh, the Nazi, or it talks about Stalinism, talks about the KGB, and it talks about a family.